better understand the, the low frequency motions of, of liquids which are important for transport properties and understanding reactivity, we measure the low frequency spectrum and we do that using ultra-fast techniques. And as liquids are very complicated, we study simpler and simpler liquids until eventually we arrived at liquid xenon and krypton and argon, which are the simplest possible liquids that there are and which have been studied theoretically for 40 odd years probably. And these are quite challenging to measure because they are only liquids for a very few degrees over a very small temperature range. And so we have to flow the liquid into a cryostat through a tube where we condense it into a, a small glass uh, cuvette in the base of a cryostat. Then we use the laser to um, interrogate the, the properties of the liquid. And the laser generates an extremely short pulse of light, a few femtoseconds long. And this light, this pulse of light interacts with the liquid through a scattering mechanism. And this scattering energizes a whole manifold of low frequency motions. And then we can watch the evolution of those motions as they decay in time although not in real time because they start on the sub picosecond time scale. So we use a step scan technique. And we can then take that data and Fourier transform it, and that gives us the frequency response of the liquid. And we can start to break that down into fundamental modes which we can compare to theory to understand how these liquids work. So the time domain signal that we finally measure from these three liquids from xenon, krypton and argon is surprisingly complex. And the simple model that we have for how these liquids should behave is that for each particle, it is surrounded by a cage structure formed from the surrounding particles. And the particle can bounce around or vibrate within this cage and then finally escape from it. In fact, what we do see in the final decay is a non-exponential decay, so it's a stretched exponential. And this implies that there is much more complex behavior over longer length scales than predicted. And in fact, this is almost exactly the same process that we see measured for water, that we can measure for water. In fact, this is the same kind of decay that we measure for water. Water is normally considered to be an exceptional, if not unique liquid. Here we see it behaves exactly the same thing as a simple liquid. And therefore, this is some kind of fundamental, universal behavior.